Hello, how we're getting on? So we're back with another depressing video. Um, yes, back with a, a match preview of our up and coming game at the weekend at the Stadium of Light against Queen's Park Rangers. Um, not much fun being a Sunderland fan at the minute, but we plod on and, uh, and we try and make the best of it. Now, as you know, or if you don't know, if you're new to the videos, we, uh, we've been using this funny quote book just as a bit of a laugh um, at the start of the videos. So, this week's quote, who said this? I started clapping myself until I realised I was a Sunderland manager. So who said, I started clapping myself until I realised I was Sunderland's manager. So as always, I'll give you that at the end of the, the video. But on the QPR, and so like I said, it's not really much fun um, being a Sunderland fan at the minute. Um, on the back of six straight defeats, we now face QPR, a side who are having a bit of a mini rev revival, if you like, um, under Marty Sifuentes. Now, until he took the job, I didn't really know too much about him. But when I've had a look, he has, you know, he has been around quite a bit and had a, quite a few managerial jobs, as you can say here. Um, he, mainly abroad, you know, he was he, being at um, Sandalford, AAB, Hammerby. Um, he got the job, the QTR job, following Gareth Ian's with Sack, Sack in October. Um, and as you can see, he played 24, he's won here to Drew 7, lost 9. Now, he's only got a win percentage rate of 33%, but that doesn't kind of really tell the whole picture. Now, they have kind of had a bit of a revival since he took over, as you can see. Um, in the last 10 games, so they've played 10, won 5, drew 3, lost 2, they've scored 14, conceded 11, and they've took 18 points from them 10 games. Now, that's a fantastic achievement. Um the last two, they lost against Borough and drew against West Brom. But before that, like I say, they've had a, a, a great revival and some, a great run of form, um, which has now left them outside of the playoffs. They were looking outside of the relegation zone, sorry. They were looking odds on to get relegated when Ains was, was, was in charge. But now they're currently sat in 20th place. They are only one point outside the relegation zone, but they'll be feeling a lot more confident about staying up. You know, if you look at the form table, this kind of says it all, you know, they are currently sat in, in 11th place, this is based on the last six games, they've played six, won three, drew one, lost two, scored seven, conceded seven, they've got ten points, look where we are, as we know, um, the run of form that we're on, played six, lost six, um, scored four, conceded 11, and no points, only Rotherham have got a worse um, performance in the last six games because they've conceded 14 goals, but... Like I said before, for a club like us, that record is is absolutely disgraceful. And you know, without wanting to sound like a broken record, it's all down to, to well to two men really, Dreyfus and Speakman. In my opinion, um, and our you know Dodds is, is tapping some flack, and yes, he has to because he's picking the team and he's picking the tactics. But ultimately, since Speakman decided to get rid of Tony Mowbray. This is where we are. It's been an absolute, you know, shambles since then. The appointment of Bale, lasting, you know, whatever it was, twelve games, or whatever it was. Um, he then went. We've now appointed Bale, uh, appointed Dodds, who's, you know, just followed that really poor run, and the, the footballer still is awful to watch, if I'm honest. Um, but QPR, you know, they've they've got some good players. Ilias Chair, you can see, is their top performer this season, along with Chris Willock um, and Steve Coote. Now, apparently, Steve Coote has been an absolute revelation since he signed on loan from Bournemouth. Massively experienced centre half. And again, somewhere like him would have massively helped us this season. But because of Mr. Speakman's model, you know, we, we won't have even looked at him. Um, goals again, Ilias Chair, top scorer with five. And he's got six assists, so you can see he's their main man. He's going to be the one to watch at the weekend. Um, and on, on to us, you know, we are a club in an absolute mess, if I'm honest. We, um, we're we in free fall. It doesn't get any better. Now on top of that record break and run, um, we've now got a defensive crisis. Um, you know, where do, where do we go from here? But if you look at our recent form, you know, with nine games to go, there's still 27 points to play for. Um, we are nine points from the relegation zone. 
Huddersfield are in 22nd on 38 points with a goal difference of minus 19. Sheffield Wednesday are one place below that on the same points but with a goal difference of minus 25. So we are nine points better off. Our goal difference is, is plus three. So we are kind of an extra point better off. So we can kind of class that as 10 points. But like I said, there's still a lot of points to play for. And everybody who's saying that was safe, I didn't agree with that. You know, I know over recent seasons, the points that we've got have been enough to stay up. But the way we are playing, it only takes for them teams in the bottom half to put together a run. Now, I know it's highly unlikely because they're in, in poor form as well, but they're all in better form than us is what I'm seeing. Um, and like I said, on top of that, the injuries we've had, again, is this something that we need to look at? Is it is it something that's behind the scenes that the physios, the coaching staff, the training is, is not good enough? It's causing all these injuries. So if you look at this, you know, our defenders... Ballard, Silt, Alicia, Circuit, Huggins, all injured. All nine suspended. Midfielders, Evans, Clark, Roberts, Embleton, Duck, all injured. You know, is, is this down to the physios? Is it just bad luck? Forwards, well, we haven't got one. So, you know, the, the less said about that, the better. We've had, I will, I will see on that in, in previous videos. So, based on that, you know, where do we go? What, what kind of team do we pick at the weekend? Well, I can only kind of see us picking this side. Um, Patterson in goal. The back four, which which looking at this really, really worries me for the weekend, is Timothy Pembelli at right back, Callum Styles at left back in the centre-half partnership of, of Leo Hjelda and Trier Hume. Now, like I say, that massively worries me um, based on what I've seen so far. Um, Dan Neil playing just in front alongside uh, Bellingham and Chris Rigg. On the wings, Abdullah Bar to play to help out Pembele defensively. And Adil Shish and Rujan, for me, they both have to start. They've both came on the last two games. They've both had a massively a massive impact on the game. So for me, they have to start. Um, if he starts the game again with the likes of Burstow, you know, then he deserves all the criticism he gets, really. But for me, that's the only team I can see us picking. But let me know what your thoughts are around that side. What kind of team would you pick? Um, but like I say, that back four absolutely worries the life out of me. Um, you know, they're coming here, they're, gonna, they're fighting for their lives. They'll certainly 100% fancy the chances to get a result on Saturday. Um, and if they do win on Saturday, it'll put them, what, two, five points behind us, I think it will be. So, um, score prediction wise, I know we've not had a home draw this season, so I'm going to go for a home draw. I'm going to predict Sunderland won. Queen's Park Rangers won um, and hope we can stop the rot get a point on the board if we can get three then you know by all means I mean it might be that you know that, that formation stumbles on it might, we might play amazing but I, I doubt it or Dan Ballard might suddenly be be miraculously fit I don't think so though so that's my score prediction of Sunderland won QPR won let us know what your thoughts are in the comments below Um the score prediction competition um, that we ran for the um, Atletico Madrid shirt. So this is the one that we had. We asked for the score predictions from LU Soccer. Um, you can see the, the, the review of LU Soccer in the previous video. Uh, nobody won at the weekend. Um, Michael Wesley was so close by predicting 4-1. Um, as we know, it was 4-2. So it rolls over into this week's video. So get your score predictions in for this. Um, for the for the QPR game, that'll count towards that um, Atletico Madrid shirt. It'll also count towards the end of the season competition that we've been running all season um, for a SAFC shirt of your choice for next year. Um, this is the current leaderboard. So Kip Vera is still in the league with 36 points. Kenneth Allen um, clawed that back to within two points at the weekend on 34. David Williams, 32. Alex Dixon, 23. David Mianel, 23. And David Edwards is in fifth on 21. So we'll get your score predictions in for that. So it'll count towards both competitions. Whoever gets the correct score for the game against QBR will win that Atletico Madrid shirt. So good luck for that. Um, like I say, you must be a member, uh, you must be a subscriber, and you must put the comment in this video. Um, now, the funny quote at the start of the video, like I said, so who said this? I started clapping myself until I realised I was Sunderland's manager. 
Did you guess who it was? Well, it was Peter Reid on Dennis Bergkamp's um, fantastic goal at Roker Park all them years ago. Um, typically something that Peter Reid would have said. Um, but that's about it for me. You know, I try not to be too depressing. Um, but like I say, at this moment in time, it's hard not to be. But please like, share and subscribe if you don't mind. Um subscribers are going really really well up to 3160 we're now heading towards 3500 by the end of the year if we can get that i'll be absolutely over the moon um also please drop us a comment on how you think the sound is um it was my birthday yesterday um i know i don't look it but i was 49 yesterday is where it is and we can't all look as good looking as me <coughs> dear me cringy but um my wonderful other half bought me a new microphone. Um, so this nice uh, Yeti. So I just want you to let me know if the uh, if the sound quality is any better, um, if it's made a difference, if it makes an impact on the videos. But um, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Stay safe, and we'll speak soon. Ta-da.